come to order, please. The uh, this is a workshop. Uh, it's going to be uh, the TDC. Brian Kellenberg will be speaking first. Uh, is there anything the commissioners would like to say before we get started? Okay, Brian, floor is yours. This is on Walt on uh, beach accesses. Okay. Chairman, Commissioners, uh, I'm Brian Kellenberger, Director of Beach Operations. Appreciate your time this afternoon. Appreciate the opportunity to speak to you about improving the uh, property that the county owns or the property that has been dedicated to the county. So we have two projects, Chairman, uh, Walton Dunes and Headland uh, Street. Uh, do you want to uh, talk about them separately or would you like me to give an overview on both of them and then let people talk on whichever one they'd like to talk about? What's the board's wishes? Separately, I think there's separate issues. Okay, okay, do them separately. So let's go over Walton Dunes first. Um, so this project uh, is part of four pieces of property that were uh, first leased to Walton County by the uh, Department of Interior Bureau of Land Management. Uh, we started the lease in 1993. Uh, in 2013, the four parcels were conveyed to us under federal government patent deed and they were conveyed under uh, what's called the Recreation and Public Purpose Act, uh, which has some terms of how the property is supposed to be used. Uh, the other three parcels have been developed into two regional beach accesses and one neighborhood beach access, and so that is the Inlet Beach Regional Beach Access, Fort Panic Regional Beach Access, and then our neighborhood beach access at uh, one Seagrove place. In 2012, this parcel, uh, Walton Dunes, came up or was identified as a uh, opportunity uh, where we could uh, apply for some NRDA funding, which was associated with the oil spill. And then in 2014, uh, we included it as part of a, um, a task that that current commission had given us to identify and assess properties that the county owns that are undeveloped. Uh, 2000, July 2014, uh, it was included in that presentation. December 2014, the TDC approved uh, a uh, half a dozen parcels of land that were included in that initiative. In April of 2016, we brought it before the then sitting county commission, and uh, there was a, uh, a uh, uh, conceptual design that was con referred to as a regional beach access light that had uh, limited parking on the south side of the road, beachfront trail, that was approved. Uh, the month after that, we were asked to put it on hold and to conduct a, another workshop, which we did in June 2016. And at that point, uh, a lot of different uh, uh, ideas for it to be developed were presented by the public and a lot of ideas for it not to be developed. Part of that, uh, direction you gave us after that workshop was to explore some of the ideas that were uh, brought forth uh, and also to give Public Works some direction on creating connectivity in the form of sidewalks or multi-use paths, paths between the existing parking lot that is uh, due north of this parcel uh, as well as uh, out to uh, County Road 30A. And that also included uh, what was referred to as some softening of two 90 degree corners that you have to uh, traverse to get off of 38 down to this area. Um, so since then, we've uh, looked at a few of the ideas, to be quite honest with you, all the ideas that have been uh, brought forth either for or against have been included in, in uh, four <coughs> conceptual designs, uh, which I have some of those tonight. And then Public Works has started that process uh, that was asked of them. They have uh, hired Atkins Engineering to do the design or conceptual designing and then the uh, design development of those components that we talked about. Uh, so to move forward on the um, uh, conceptual designs that have been brought forth before. Uh, Jason, are you controlling the thing? Here? So the three, the four designs that, that exist, uh, one of them is what would be considered a regional beach access. And uh, in, in all of the designs except one, which would be a neighborhood beach access, 
they have uh, main components of parking areas or area, a uh, restroom or bathhouse, a uh, ADA uh, compliant boardwalk and what I refer to as you know plaza around the uh, bathroom. Uh, part of that Recreation and Public Purpose Act requires that anything we do there be uh, ADA compliant. And then also uh, from that workshop uh, in June 2016, uh, dune uh, degradation or uh, destroying of the dunes was a, a, a common theme. And so included in it, we would uh, have a dune restoration component. And the design that we've set out in all of the three conceptual designs that have a bathroom, we have put everything over on the east side of the property and landward of the CCCL. And that preserves the larger dune on the west side of the property and it gets uh, into the smaller dune on the east side of the property very little. But once again, we would do a dune restoration component to help build the dunes out in front of that area. Uh, the next design is what we call the regional beach access light. And uh, so it has a restroom, the ADA uh, accessible boardwalk dune walkover and then parking only on the south side of Beachfront Trail. Uh, both of these, the, the regular, regular regional beach access and the regional beach access light, also have this parking area on the east side that doubles as a turnaround. Uh, so cars that need to turn around can pull into there. Uh, there's a spaces put in there where they can pull head in, turn around, and come out straight. Another idea that was, uh, has been discussed but has not been conceptually diagrammed is a uh, cul-de-sac type feature right where Beachfront Trail uh, on the, in between our property and the Walton Dunes townhome properties. So right there where the road, those two properties come together, create a cul-de-sac of some sort. Uh, one I understand from our engineering firm is uh, 80 foot diameter is the minimum for the fire trucks to be able to turn around in. We have 66 feet uh, for that road right of way. So that, that presents some of a problem. It would still have to have a component, as you see in that smaller parking area, where a fire truck could back in and then pull out headways. But for regular vehicle traffic, it would help uh, minimize, mitigate people traveling further east to uh, then turn around in somebody else's parking area or driveway. The next one uh, is a uh, even lighter version of regional beach access in that it has right-of-way parking on the south side. Those are all shown as handicap parking. That was an effort, uh, you know, uh, by our engineer. I think if this was going to be considered that some of those would be handicapped and some would be regular. Uh, it does not have the turnaround component on it. And so I think that in, in any version that is considered this evening that some form of turnaround component be included because that was another one of the uh, topics of the people that uh, are uh, have some some grief with us developing this this, this property um, once again this would have you know a handicap accessible boardwalk the fourth version which we do not have a conceptual plan for is what's considered a neighborhood beach access and it would just be a, a boardwalk and dune walkover probably placed on the uh, west side of the property. Uh, so as you create a connectivity to that uh, parking lot that's just north of there, that would be the logical place adjacent to our uh, drive on access. This is one of the points, places where we get our trucks on and off the beach. Uh, of course, we've been compromised somewhat by customary use, but we are still getting to some areas down there. Um, so those are the four conceptual uh, ideas for uh, Walton Dunes. Uh, if you have any questions or comments about it, I'd like to answer them. Go ahead. Get your feedback, Jason. I don't know where it's coming from. My mic, maybe. Y'all bear with us just a minute, please.
back in 16 when this was brought to this board uh, I don't believe any of the rest of them were here at the time however uh, one thing I was really adamant about is that connectivity you were talking about to improve the safety in that area do you have any idea if Public Works has got any type of plan or design, even if it's preliminary, showing putting in the uh, multi-use path or sidewalk, enlarging the sidewalk, that we can get people off the road and the kids well, out of the road? I have not seen a plan, but I talked with Chance Powell yesterday, and uh, that's included in the, in the design effort, is either a sidewalk or a multi-use path that would connect from our parking lot and go north uh, along that road up to Highway 38 to connect to that multi-use path. Now there's sidewalks as part of that uh, uh, residential development on the east side of Lake Wood Road. Um, and so I would assume that it would probably go up the east side of that road and then have to cross. It, they may bring it down the uh, west side so that it stays on the outside of the curve all the way down to our parking lot and then there's already sidewalk a certain distance from the parking lot uh, headed south and they would finish up that sidewalk all the way down to whatever becomes of this piece of property uh, once again if it's a neighborhood beach access it would come down to where the boardwalk is bike parking area if it's a regional beach access of form, some form come down and connect that sidewalk to the boardwalk so there would be complete connectivity all the way to the beach Okay, all of your concepts for mm -hmm. a regional yes, sir. shows a uh, on primarily the east side of the property, some type of structure there for bathrooms and what have you. Yes, sir. Uh, if you come down and take that sidewalk that's on the west side of the road there, and as it makes that horseshoe coming back, mm -hmm. uh, wouldn't that not take up part of any parking that you put there along that side right so all the parking designs that have been put forth have a sidewalk that comes what would be south side of the parking area okay and, and so they've they've allowed for that it'd be our standard five foot uh sidewalk that allows for ada accessibility two wheelchairs to pass at the same time all right the dune located on the east of uh, excuse me the west side is approximately 18 feet height yes sir top bed. tops out at 19 feet 19 feet and the other one at the far east then is how high do you know eight or yes nine sir feet? i do uh hang on a second let me uh, reference drawings it uh the one closest to the road tops out at 15 feet and the one closest to the uh flat part of the beach is, beach is about 12 feet keep in mind that the road uh on the east side of the property is at 12.42 feet and on the west side of the property it's at 14.75 feet and if you were if we were to put a regional access in there you would be working or designing the, that structure to be where it wouldn't impact that correct it would be more than likely a piling supported facility uh, due to the land development codes and the FDEP uh, flood zone or FEMA flood zone codes it has to be a certain above a certain base flood elevation and uh, and part of all of the of any one of these projects would be a dune restoration project where we would enhance the dunes seaward of the building right. in fact there was an idea floated uh of having some sort of interpretive center as part of this project that would uh talk about the benefits of protecting dunes and building dunes and all that but if we were to look at a regional mm -hmm. access there jason can you flip we, back to, we still uh, got to take into the into consideration how people can turn around once they get to that point without having to go all the way down in yes these other so it's either it sounds like a cul-de-sac is out of the question it's about 20 feet more than our right of way well unless you come south would, towards there you still do a cul-de-sac to catch normal traffic and allow them to have turnaround you know, opportunity but you would still need to provide a place for a, a fire truck to pull in back out and turn around and that's the, the small parking lot that's off to the east side adjacent to Walton Dunes townhomes that that provides that uh, in fact it, without a cul-de-sac it provides the same opportunity for a person to pull in there'd be a dedicated area where there's no parking they pull in back around 
and come out like that. Uh, I think that if you if you were going to do this, that by putting a cul-de-sac there at the end, that people that had come down to load or unload, you know, load and unload the stuff, or decide they didn't want to stay, uh, would have opportunity to turn around and go back out without having to go further east on Beachfront Trail. Once again, that was a uh, one of the um, talking points of people that are in opposition to this, or some of the things that they have grief over. And, you know, there's actually a lot of room there that is private property. Maybe there's an opportunity for uh, some of that to be included in a 80-foot turnaround. Uh, purely speculation, but uh, it's land that I don't believe they're going to develop. Uh, but, like I say, that, that speculation. Uh, yes, sir. I know there's a electric box on the far west end. Mm -hmm. Other than that, it would seem to me that that would be the most logical place for a turnaround. You're keeping them totally out of that back neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And you could actually build like a two lane where you could have some five minute parking to offload. With yes, sir. Another circle around to get the traffic out of there. Mm -hmm. uh, other than the electric box, is there any reason we couldn't do that? I don't believe so. We'd have to do, you know, on any design development, we we do you know, extensive study of the existing utilities. Sometimes we have to relocate utilities. Sometimes we can work around them. Uh, I, but cursory review of it, it looks like there's opportunity to do something down there that would serve the purpose of providing a turnaround area. Well, that you know, if you if you came straight off of the road right there at the curb and just looped it around. Mm -hmm. That's minimal uh, impact on the dunes because there's already that wide area that goes to the beach. Mm -hmm. so yes, sir. If, if that would seem to me to be the, the logical place, and they're already doing that. Uh, they're going down there and parking golf carts or whatever, and then uh, looping back around and going hopefully to the parking lot. Mm -hmm. So that, that would seem to be the most logical place to do that. Mm -hmm. And then the bathrooms to, could be to the west, but you're, you're talking about a minimal impact on the dunes mm -hmm. if you do it that way. We're talking about on what would be on the east side of the property. The, yeah, the bathrooms would be where right. you got them, but the turnaround would be on the west side, on the west where, side that, where you're just looping yeah. around. That, that, that's an idea. I, I didn't follow you at first, but I'm following you now. That, yeah, that, that's certainly an idea. We have 66 foot of right of way if you're coming north, south, or east, west. So I would, I would suggest looking at that. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, Brian, I got a couple of questions. Yes, sir. With the design you have there, how many parking places would that be? So with the, uh, this is the light. It has uh, 13 spaces, including the ones that are in the uh, turnaround area, 13 regular and six handicap. I'm sorry, four handicap. Okay. No, six handicap. All right. uh, which, which exceeds the number of handicap we want or you would need, but uh, oftentimes we build more than what's required. Okay. Uh, how many how many feet of beach do we have there? I believe there's right around uh, 260. All right. Uh, now the one you showed where parking was also across the road. Yes, sir. Jason, if you can. How many ahead. parking places would that be? There is 35 in that one. 35 regular. Four handicap and six golf. Six what? Golf cart. Okay. Is that north side in the right of way? Yes. yes, sir. All that was contained within that 66 foot right of way. All right. If 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 you did that one, would there still be room for that turnaround that Commissioner Glide was talking about? On the west side of the property, yeah. we'd, I'd have to have the engineer look at it, but it, it looks like there would be opportunity to do some sort of, uh, of a cul-de-sac. Or there's not enough room for a roundabout, uh, but certainly a cul-de-sac type uh, uh, corner could be built there. But engineer could speak to that better. Um, certainly something we can explore. Okay. Go ahead. <coughs> If we're talking about the west side where it's wide and putting a cul-de-sac or turnaround right there, 
how is that going to impact the um, sidewalk on the west side of the road? Is that, I can see there's going to be a, a conflict point there with the vehicles. There, or, there, there, there could be. Uh, once again, it, it, we, we'd need to put some pen to paper and start you know, getting a uh, diagrammatical view of it. But sidewalks are five feet. It would obviously run around the outside perimeter of any type of round element you built or designed. Uh -huh. If you if you come straight down from the parking lot, that sidewalk is there. If you come straight down mm -hmm. and looped around, mm -hmm. then you're you're basically having an area to offload that's also mm -hmm. serves a side. And then when you you go to the east, you mm -hmm. just go back to the road. Yeah. But that if you have a offloading zone there, that, <coughs> that takes a lot of the pressure off the roadway. And then mm -hmm. turning some place to turn around, it doesn't take people all the way into that neighborhood is. Yeah, that, that, like I said, that I've was been one. down there several times, and there's, mm -hmm. there's not a lot of space down there. There's not. There's concrete trucks and everything else going through there. As we, you know, continue to, to develop or redevelop property, it's, uh, you know, those problems exist throughout South Walton. We had somebody destroy the stop sign at the corner up there by some large truck. Any other questions from the board? Seeing none. Thank you, Brian. Yes, sir. Uh, before we get started with the audience, I'm going to apologize in advance for butchering anybody's name. So, uh, Steve Junker, please state your name and spell your last name, please. Steve Junker, J-U-N-K-E-R, at 350 Beachfront Trail. I live in uh, the beach access that we just talked about. I'm a full-time resident in the neighborhood for over five years, and I drive through it on most days to my commute to Eglin. I was at the workshop in 16, and I thought the vice chair, your comments were, were very compelling and spot on. And I'd like to kind of review, you're the continuity of this group, of what you said back then, because it applies as much today. You said, I was at the beach and I had to walk around a truck and a golf cart that was parked on the side of the road to get around a 90 degree turn. There were people out there in the street and, and the sidewalk, there was kids out there on bikes. And seeing the photographs presented today at the workshop, my biggest concern is for their safety. As an old cop, you said it, I didn't. You have to have safety, you also have to have rules and regulations. If we consider to enhance the bike path or multi-use path there on the north side a lot, I'm okay with that. Kids are on bikes three and four abreast down the road and it's illegal. But if we could extend that path in the right of way and widen it, we could put a good sized bike path down there. It would provide the safety that is needed. That would be functional for the people walking back and forth. You said, I think it was Mr. Charles Wilson that said, people tend to get lazy. If I can drive down there instead of walk 100 feet, they will. That's an issue and I acknowledge that. The proposed access would probably just fill in with people in the neighborhood rather than what it's intended for. If we might consider at a later date, Madam Chair, that we do a survey of the right of way and the placement of the road in the existing sidewalk and what options are available to enhance what we have. I know we can't work on the west side, but we have space to the east side that could provide access for people. Once we decide what to do, I'm gonna ask my staff to meet the sheriff's office and let's go down there and analyze what needs to be done proper signage and enforcement taken, and the signs went up, thank you. The west side access provides the best place for a special needs walkover and ramp. Bathrooms can probably be put where the existing parking lot is. Let's try to work with our existing right of way and some additional enhancements for safety and a sidewalk and a multi-use path and a handicap access and enhanced drop off area, just like you said, Mr. Glide, well, that drop off area. And uh, get, get people out of the main area and off the site. These are my comments. Thank you. So, Vice Chair, I appreciate your comments so much because you're safety-minded with your background. You too, Mr. Mr. Glywell, with your safety background. Make no mistake about this. This is a very dangerous road and neighborhood. And I just want you to keep safety first when you make your decisions. Please... Do not do anything until you address these infrastructure issues, a continuous bike path and the, and, and the soft curves that, uh, that Brian had mentioned. We gotta address those before you move to whatever you're gonna do. So thanks for your time. Marina
Marina Daniel, 23 Seawinds Court. He took my quote, so I'm going to skip a lot of my stuff. <laughs> Excuse me? Okay. Um, although I have several concerns regarding the proposed development of the Walton Dunes Beach access, of course, safety is my main concern. Um, I know I've emailed all of you previously, but my husband was, in a, was on a bike on, on uh, Lakewood and uh, ended up in the ER with major injuries. So safety is definitely my number one. We also rent out our house, and I get repeated um, comments from my guests that their children have been run, not run over, but run off the roads and had incidents. Um, so we've got some major curves that need addressing. And thank you so much, Mr. Glywell, for coming out today and seeing everything firsthand. Um, all of these incidents, we've emailed the BCC over the last five years about our safety concerns, um, just to document everything. We were encouraged by the last workshop on June 8, 2016, when all of the commissioners actually came out to the site individually without us knowing it <laughs> and witnessed our safety concerns firsthand. And this is where I was going to quote Mr. Chapman, but I'm going to skip that since he did, read the quote. Um, but we were very encouraged by all of the commissioners' um, attitudes towards our safety issues. Uh, in that, Mr. Chapman, you asked the chair to have Public Works complete a survey of the right-of-way and where a multi-use path could be placed to ensure the safety of our residents and tourists. But sadly, we haven't seen any of that yet. <laughs> um, in our community, people elect to walk or cycle to the beach. At peak season, the beach is at capacity, but the existing lot you'll see usually has spots available. The placement of the existing lot actually promotes walking and cycling of the neighborhood in lieu of driving, which helps minimize the vehicular traffic in our area. If parking is made available directly where the dunes are, many residents and tourists in the neighborhood will just elect to drive rather than walk or cycle, just like Charles Wilson mentioned in that last workshop. I mean, I would do the same thing. If if I can drive there and park really close, then I'm going to do that instead of walk. But now I walk. So the result will be more vehicles on the road, and the new parking spots will be utilized by those who would have walked or cycled. And I have only 30 seconds left. Um, let me skip. <laughs> so basically, I just want to make sure that we're a part of the process. You know, we're not opposed to things. We're not opposed to... Having a restroom, we'd like it to be much smaller than 30 by 50, but we're not opposed to that. But we like to be part of the process, and we'd like you to incorporate all of our safety issues first. And can I say one thing about the, um, the can I talk for just a second? The, no, no, no. <laughs> It's no strand. Thank you. Uh -huh. No strand, N O S T R A N D. So, Commissioners, thank you for holding this workshop today. My name is Kristen Nostrand, as many of you know. I'm a full time resident on Lakewood Drive as well as an HOA president. I've written to you and Brian on three occasions with regards to preparation for this workshop, including yesterday when, when I included the images of the cement truck backing down the entire length of Beachfront Trail. You just can't make some of this stuff up, but it happens all the time. I'm concerned that evolving the neighborhood beach access to a regional beach access is irresponsible from a safety standpoint to both residents and visitors. This property, as you know, is close to a mile off of 30A. It's unique in that regard rel relative to any other RBAs. And the streets leading to it are already narrow with no continuous sidewalk, as you've mentioned. So y you recognize all the issues. So additionally, they include the two dangerous 90 degree turns. So it's a safety concern not only for pedestrians and bikes, but also golf carts and automobiles that use it as well. So encouraging more traffic into the neighborhood by promoting it as an RBA just seems irresponsible. And any proposal that would require cars to back into Beachfront Trail is simply unacceptable. I, I just I can't understand how that could even be part of the, one of the proposals that's on the table. Enhancing the neighborhood beach access is appropriate, and we 
thought several projects would be completed after the 2016 decision to maintain it as one, including the handicap ramp, additional bike racks, better signage, and bathrooms, none of which have happened with, with the exception of one additional bike rack and the signage that indicates that it is, in fact, a dead-end street. I understand shifting funds to include the infrastructure of the neighborhood into this project is challenging, but I agree with you, Commissioner Chapman, that you simply can't do one without the other. And it just doesn't seem right that the TDC can come forth and present something you know, for the beach that doesn't take into account its location in the back of the neighborhood. I'd really like to thank you, Mr. Glidewell, for meeting with several of the full-time residents and your ideas for the ideal solution. I think the turnaround at the curve to minimize the traffic at the end of the street is, is brilliant. And the fact that it wasn't in any of the, the four recommendations is clearly an outage. And minimizing the footprint while adhering to the ADI guidelines for a bathroom makes sense. So we have to trust that you guys care about uh, as much about the residents as the tourists as Mr. Glidewell does. And I know, Commissioner Chapman, you do from, from all the things that you said back in 16. So whatever the next step is, I would just hope that every commissioner and Brian spend about one to two hours midday out there just observing the access, observing how people get there, observing the car traffic, observing the construction traffic, and then make your decision from there. Thank you for your time. John T. Olive. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is John T. Olive, spelled O-L-I-V-E. My friends call me Terry for the middle name. I've been a property owner and taxpayer in Walton County since 1985. Obviously, for shorter periods of time, as I've grown a little bit older, uh, we moved here absolutely full-time in 2007. One of the properties we continue to own is at Dunes of Seagrove, adjacent to where this project would be. Uh, having spent a lot of time there, I've had chances to observe the operation both of the people who are our visitors, the people who are residents, plus the people who have to work on that beach either as safety or as pickup, as trash, as other things. Uh, in 2004, when Hurricane Ivan came through, we had a small version of what's happened to our neighbors to the east in recent months. And we were here. We were the last people off the property at Dunes of Sea Grove uh, when the evacuation went into effect and were the I was the second person back on the property. So I saw what had happened, I saw the results. Uh, we were amazed that our walkover was there, but the rest of them, as far as we could see, the east and west were gone. The beach was absolutely covered in debris. Uh, everything from uh, trees, to my wife finding a uh, set of false teeth on the beach uh, right afterwards, next to a, a washing machine agitator. There may be a tie there somehow. But my observation was, and I was on the property, in dealing with all that debris on the beach, big equipment was brought in with high tires, big rubber tires. They cleaned for miles in both directions because it's one of the few accesses directly onto the beach for trucks. They brought it to this spot. They piled it on the property that you want to build on until it was a mountain of debris, much like you see over in Panama City now. Later then, bigger trucks came in with high sides on them, trailer trucks, probably 50 feet long at least. And all of that debris was loaded from that spot into the big trucks and taken away. My point is that without that staging area for that big equipment, and for it to be parked when it wasn't in use, and to get all of this debris away, we would be in a real problem when the next storm comes. Thank you. Thank you. Lee Paget. Good afternoon, commissioners. My name is Lee Paget. That's P-A-D-G-E-T-T. -T. 
I am speaking on behalf of the Dunes of Seagrove Condominium Association, which is the immediate neighbor west of the Walton Dune parcel. Dunes of Seagrove is opposed to the proposed plan of improvements to the county parcel for two main reasons, safety and dune preservation. Lakewood Drive is a narrow road for the amount of demand it has, and vehicular and pedestrian traffic have to share the road for most of its length as there are no sidewalks or path for most of the roadway. The road also contains several sharp 90-degree turns. These turns, along with dense foliage growth, reduce the visibility down to only a few feet, making these areas very dangerous as the heavy amounts of cars, golf carts, cyclists, and pedestrians share the narrow road, roadway. There are numerous close calls on a daily basis as the pedestrians and cyclists try to navigate the road along with the hundreds of vehicles that travel it as well. In 2016, when the TDC proposed to make this parcel into a regional beach access point, the county commissioner board expressed severe concerns for safety of those coming in and out of the neighborhood and tasked the TDC to review the safety concerns and implement the suggestions that were discussed. However, this current plan is the exact same plan that was presented in 2016 without any changes to address safety of residents and tourists alike. Improvements to the county parcel without first addressing the safety of the road and pedestrian pathway will increase significantly the threat of accidents and injuries in this area. Another substantial safety concern will be the lack of proper travel path for vehicular traffic along Beachfront Trail. <coughs> Beachfront Trail is essentially a dead end road with no way to turn around. Any improvements made to the county-owned parcel should without question include aspects to ease the traffic flow and turnaround ability. In the current proposed plan, the only way to turn around would be for the vehicles to pull into the small parking space area on the east side of the parcel, then have to reverse out back into Beachfront Trail into other waiting cars and oncoming traffic. Our second major concern would be dune preservation. As we all know, sand dunes serve an incredible purpose in preserving the beaches of northwest Florida acting as a line of defense against destructive weather and in the slowing of flooding of roads and structures north of the beach. Because of the time involved in establishing these dunes as well as the sensitive ecosystem that lives within them, these dunes should never be diminished or destroyed in any way unless absolutely necessary and the building of a parking lot or restroom is not necessary. Preservation of our sand dune system should take priority over accommodating more cars and bathrooms. We sincerely and respectfully request that the Board of Commissioners reject any improvements to the Walton Dunes Beach Access Parcel until plans include dealing with the current safety hazards and include full preservation of the existing dunes. Thank you. And I've also included in the packet uh, some pictures of the area as well as information from the original workshop in 2016 for your review. Thank you. Denise Bueno. Is that even close? That's very close. I'm amazed. You took French. <laughs> no. <laughs> High school French. My name is Denise Boino, and I live at 81 Beach Front Trail. I'm a full-time owner uh, here for about the last three years. My biggest concern that I have really is about the safety of our neighborhood. I live in an area where when we're sitting at the bottom of the hill of Beach Front Trail, we're seeing cars cresting the hill. I have fallen in that road twice. Um, the second time I fell, um, I broke my wrist, and that was because there are cars coming at that S turn right at C Point um, Drive. And I made my way to Sacred Heart Hospital, and I had a cast for an extended period of time. Um, so I am very concerned about the issues that we have with all the cars, bringing in 35 more um, parking spaces on top of a dune that is actually protecting us from the hurricanes that could possibly make our way you know to our area is really a big concern to us so that is the um, the biggest issue that i have i do also feel that um, i'm not sure if there have been any environmental impact studies um, on what would happen when we actually bring in all these parking um, spots but i think they're very important to recognize that anything that we do to change the dynamic of those dunes could really impact all of our homes and that is a big concern for all of us so that what I wanted to bring to your attention today. Thank you. Thank you. Kay Carlton. Um, my name is Kay Carlton, C-A-R-L-T-O-N, and I have a property at uh, 207 Beachfront Trail, and I am in opposition of this uh, development 
just today, and it's not even high, high time, there were so many trucks and cars going back and forth, they had a hard time getting by. And um, we have children and grandchildren that come, and they want to come to enjoy the beach. I'm in the, the business of having tourists also. And this is not what they come for. So I just would like you to consider the safety and, and the enjoyment of the beaches, the quality. That's what they come for, for the dunes. It's not a flattened out place. And all of these uh, developments are all destroying the dunes. They put in a dune restoration that they're trying to do on the east end, and now they want to go ahead and, and tear it down. I don't understand that. So thank you for your time. Hello, my name is Tina Barron, B-A-R-A-N. Um, my husband John and I live at 207 Beachfront Trail, um, so we are directly impacted. Um, this will be the third time that I've spoke before the county commissioners, um, probably in the last six to seven years, on this very same issue. Um, but today I'm not going to talk about all the obvious reasons of why um, there should be no development on Beachfront Trail, such as the turtles, the environment, the safety. We all already know these. Those are factors of some of the factors of why. But I want to speak about the quality of my life. I have lived there for eight years permanently. You know, if you don't live there, then you don't understand how bringing so many people into our residential neighborhood impacts the quality of our life. Fourth of July, my whole family was here from Alabama. You know what time we got to sit on the beach? At about 3.30 that afternoon when we could find a place. It is overcrowded. They have, because of CU use, they have pushed people from other areas that used to have an opportunity. There used to be a beach access for over by Sugar Dunes, which is just a couple of blocks down from us. Now someone has gone in and bought the property, put up the signs. Now those people are pushed over into Beachfront Trail. Um, changing the intended use for the access to, the, to a region, it will place an unnecessary and an un unsupported burden on our whole entire community. More traffic, more people. Our neighborhood, um, our neighborhood was actually coded as a residential preservation area. And that's by the Walton County Land Development. That's how they coded our neighborhood. Think about that. A residential preservation, meaning that that whole area primarily there, there are a lot of residents who live there, and that area needs to be protected. As you all know, 30A has, is busting at the seams, and we need to try to hold on and protect the areas that we do have. Um, how I just don't understand how the county commissioners can allow the TDC to keep coming back you know, year after year after year, pushing this down our throats. We have to take off for it. We have to do research to come here to fight them. You guys don't work for the TDC. You work for us. And when the citizens of, this, of that area come and tell you they do not want this project, please stand up. Tony, you sat behind me before you were an elected official in this very room, and you said to me, shame on Cindy Meadows. She, shouldn't have, she should stand up for you guys. So I'm asking you today to stand up for me to stand up for all of us who live there, you know, because look where it got uh, Cindy. I mean, people will remember come election, okay? And if you don't believe it, ask Cindy. We just want to protect what is ours. And thank you, Tony. Thank you for the commission. Let's keep that quiet, please. We've got a lot of work to do here. Uh, David Cook. Uh, my desire was to speak to the head of the division. Okay. Janet Breeze. I don't want to talk on this issue. Ma'am? I don't need to talk on this issue. Okay. Give me just a second. Mark Weiss. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Mark Weiss. Sorry. Weiss, I'm sorry, Mr. It's all right. 
and that's W-Y-S-S. Um, I'm a resident at uh, 34 Heron's Watch, so I ride my bike with my uh, little fishing buggy behind it to go down to fish, and I use the uh, area you're talking about uh, quite often. Um, there's no question that there's some safety issues. I think we're all big people. We can figure out those safety issues, whether it's stop signs or larger turnarounds. Um, change is not really very much fun for most people, but uh, there's a lot of people that uh, don't live on the street that still need to have access to the beaches. And uh, the main reason I came to talk was uh, I was down there a couple days, met uh, a disabled uh, military vet, and uh, we started talking. He said he can only come whenever he uh, has a ride. And I said, well, there's a parking lot, you know, down the way, and he said, can't do that. He said, so the only time I get to use this space is when I have somebody to give me a ride. So, um, you know, whether or not you have 35 spaces or 10 spaces, uh, and whether or not you have more handicap than, than what's required by uh, law, um, I think that's a thing you should really think about. I mean, I understand the people that live in the neighborhood don't want change. I respect that. But on the other hand, there are thousands of other people that can have access to that area in a way that's uh, in a lot more po positive type of, uh, of uh, situation. So, um, you know, the, one of the last speakers said that you guys work for them while well, you work for all of the people in the county. And so uh, I think there's a lot of folks there that would probably have more access to the beach if there were facilities there. Um, and I think the dune restoration may, may uh, help with some of the concerns about the dune restoration. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Good afternoon, Lori Reichenbach, R-E-I-C-H-E-N-B-A-C-H. Uh, out of respect for all of my neighbors here, I have owned, been in and out of three properties in this very area, and in 2016, I spoke vociferously against this park due to the safety issues. It's a new day and a new time in Walton County. What we talked about in 2016, life has completely changed. I am here today to recognize that I heard a part of this project is dune restoration. I heard that to get down to this park will include a bike or a uh, multi-use path to allow safer transport. We have three opportunities to look at. Surely we can figure out something from an uh, infrastructure standpoint that will work. But we are in the battle of our lives in Walton County with the secession of customary use. And for those residents who live here and work here full time, whether they're one row off, one block off, one mile off, north of 98, north of the Bay, or north of Defuniac Springs, with our limited amount of county access beach, we have to make the most of everything we currently have so that all of you who live north of Defuniac and all of us who are on the north side of 98 are in a position where we don't have accessible beaches with bathrooms, etc. We have to think about all of the residents now that we cannot sit anywhere we want to sit. So I ask you to continue your investigation of safety and the infrastructure of the area, but I ask you to move forward with the regional access so that more citizens of Walton County will at least have one more option to come to the beach. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, I, it was Lorenz Otson first, but you can come ahead and then he can come. Okay. However y'all want to do it. <laughs> sorry about that. That's all right.
Good afternoon. My name is Beverly Otten. That's O-T-T-Z-E-N. Um, what I'm passing around now is, is what I passed around in 2016 when Laurie and I were on the same side of the fence, but she doesn't live in our neighborhood anymore, so she has a different point of view now. But the traffic, what, none of these things have been done. The board at that time embraced our ideas to improve the access. None of us are advocating any kind of exclusivity. We're not opposed to change. Um, we live here. We support customary use. We want everybody to be able to get to the beach, but we want to be able to do it safely. Now, I live at 415 Beachfront Trail, the, out there toward the very end of Beachfront Trail. The only way we can get anywhere from our home or to get back home is to go in front of this um, beach access here. Now, mistakes might have been made many years ago when they platted these subdivisions out there, but we're up against the state park on one side, and there is no way to get to our home other than to turn off 30A onto Lakewood Drive and then Beachfront Trail. There, there are more than 40 homes that are east of this beach access, and some of those homes are not really single-family residences. They're big rental houses that accommodate up to 40 people. Um, they come down here with a lot of cars. Then you've got all the service vehicles for these houses, and you've got a constant flow of construction vehicles. It's a very, very dangerous situation out there, and um, I agree with my neighbors who are inviting you to come out and just, just be there for a while to observe. Mr. Glidewell came out this morning, and there were cement trucks every which way and all kind of things. This, this, is, this is not even the high season. So... We're afraid that somebody's going to get killed out there. We've been asking you for years to address the infrastructure. We want sidewalks. We want bike paths. We want this turnaround. Um, we don't want just the same plan coming out of the TDC. We want to be part of the process. We're reasonable people. We want to compromise. We want to be part of the planning because we live here and we want everybody to be safe. The other thing is we want the dunes to be preserved, and you cannot restore a dune that has a bathroom sitting on it. Any construction on this site whatsoever is going to take away from the dune. So you can't just say, oh, we'll come back later and fix it, because that's, that can't happen. The dune starts at the road, and if the road weren't there, the dune would walk across the road, because dunes do that. So please don't destroy what's there. People come to this access because they, they love the beauty of it. So don't destroy that, and please let us be part of the process. Thank you very much for your time. Lorraine Johnson. Sorry, I skipped over you. Mr. Johnson. Good afternoon, Commission. Lawrence Otson, O-T-T-Z-E-N. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Mr. Glidewell, we appreciate your visit to the neighborhood this morning to address our concerns about safety in our neighborhood on Lakewood Drive and Beachfront Trail. We are in great need of safe sidewalks all the way from 30A to the beach. The blind curves on Lakewood are dangerous and people have to walk in the street there because there is no place else to be. If the county does not provide these seats, uh, sidewalks, we are afraid someone is going to be, get badly hurt or killed. And I know there are quite a few people that have already been hurt in previous years. It's inevitable unless you do something to alleviate this very dangerous situation. I propose uh, that the speed limit on Beach, Beachfront Trail and Lakewood Drive be reduced to 15 miles an hour until sidewalks are installed, or maybe even after sidewalks are installed. The, sa uh, the safety of the residents and the visitors to this neighborhood is in your hands, really. It's not in ours, I don't think. Thank you. Richard 
text the Hedlund, Hedlund presentation. <clears throat> Thank you for your support of public beach accesses. I'm Mr. here to Bittell, excuse me, would you spell your last name for the clerk? Oh, Richard Bittell, B is in Bravo, U-T-E-L-A, Seagrove Beach, Florida, 55 Chanel Court. Thank you. Um, okay, thank you very much for supporting the uh, maximum public use of public beaches. Um, and I'm here to support improvement of the public's use of public beaches. As Laurie said, we've got to maximize all the public beaches we have because customer use is in jeopardy. Uh, currently at this, cur at this current situation that we have uh, with this 250 sheet of county owned beach beaches, uh, the majority of the public really can't use it. I mean, they have no bathrooms. The uh, parking is over two blocks away. I mean, we need to maximize the use of this beach. And there's nothing unique about any of the uh, uh, safety problems. We have safety problems wherever you mix pedestrians and cars together. Yes, we need multi-path, multi-use paths. We definitely need more in Seagrove Beach, too. Okay, so I'll, uh, I'll support what they've said. Um, the... You know, this, this 250 feet of public beach is not just for those that happen to be lucky enough to live to walk there. This is for everybody. Um, and um, this area is very unique in that there really is uh, no regional beach accesses from Seagrove all the way to Orange Beach. There's none. So you have a massive development all along there. You have Prominence, you've got Heron's Watch. You got new, new condos going in there. There's no regional beach access. Another thing unique about this is a nice level terrain for wounded warriors, uh, veterans, uh, people getting old like me um, who might need a walker or a, and don't want to go down the switchbacks that we have in Seagrove. Um, and also, remember back in 9, 2014, smarter people than I recommended this. The, F, the Walton County AFCON needs assessment study recommended a regional beach access at Walton News Beach Front Trail. Um, the TDC, uh, I'm very impressed with their engineering study, what they've done. They're going to really consider the environment with dune restoration, nourishment, and preservation. Uh, it would be safe to say that many of the neighborhoods around there were not as careful with the environment when they bulldozed mature dunes, not primary small dunes like we have here, when they put their private roads and parking lots in, et cetera. Um, so it's, uh, this is not a neighborhood road. This road has been established two lane road with a line down the middle. It's been used for decades before these other developments were even here. Um, it's been used for service vehicles, emergency vehicles, uh, et cetera. They even used it when they, we had the damage during the hurricane. They had to bring heavy equipment down there. So, th so this, is, this is a established road. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Butella. Alice Butella. Hello, my name is Alice McKenna Butella. I live at 55 Chanel Court, Santa Rosa Beach, Florida. Uh, thank you, commissioners, for your continued effort to improve the public's accessibility to the Gulf. I support the TDC's proposals to make changes at Beachfront Trail Walton Dunes to create this as a regional, regional beach access. It sounds like you have a lot of uh, safety needs there that need, need to be re addressed regardless of whether it's regional beach access or not. And I, I hope those are taken care of. Uh, Beachfront Trail is an amazingly beautiful piece of county-owned property. And I think the well-planned improvements discussed would not only save and enhance the dunes, but it would also allow this Gulf front, uh, county Gulf front to be enjoyed more comfortably by many, many more residents of the county. The addition of restrooms, adjacent parking with handicap cap accessibility and a possible lifeguard station is greatly needed in this area. The massive developments away from the beach demonstrates the increased need for more parking at this county beach access. If one has to drive a number of miles for a beach experience, they most likely will stay for the day, requiring closed parking 
uh, lifeguards and restrooms. And as Mr. Tusa said in uh, the latest article in the paper, he said we need to make the trip, the trip to the beach seamless. Off-beach expansion has been allowed to continue. Therefore, the county must be prepared to deal with the outcome. And those outcomes are the need for amenities and accesses and the beachside residents not wanting to share, with their share their beaches with people near them. The research has been completed and the plans have been scrutinized. The beach neighbors have been heard. And now it is time for BCC to make this lovely beach accessible and easily available to all residents and visitors as well. Thank you. Thank you. John Harlow. Commissioner, I'm going to be here to talk about Headland. Okay. Mansell White, Headland. Yeah. Troy Barton. Good afternoon. I'm Troy Barton, B-A-R-T-O-N, 43 Dune Ridge Road. Um, I'm here representing the Greenway Park Homeowners Association. Uh, thank you for those of you who uh, responded to my email. We have 52 owners in our neighborhood and happen to be located uh, in the Eastern Lake area on the north side of 30A. And uh, today, our regional beach access would be the Eastern Lake beach access that has been added with seven parking places. However, the outfall has overtaken the uh, regional beach access and it is unusable at this point. So we find ourselves having to drive a mile and a half to Bramble Grove to find a place to access the beach, given we're over a half a mile away from the water on the north side of 30A. Uh, we view this as a, a strategic location of land that's already owned by the county that would give us the perfect beach access for a neighborhood like ours and for all the other neighborhoods that are north of 30A in that particular area where we're not within walking distance of the beach. Um, I think the safety concerns that have been raised here today are ones that we see when we're down there using that beach access already and would certainly support uh, the development of those into the plan to make sure it's a safe place. Uh, but this looks like the type of strategic development that would be ideal, that looks well thought out with concerns for the environment and for safety already, which could be further enhanced. And uh, our neighborhood and our 50 owners would certainly support the development of this. Thank you. Thank you. Brian Monahue. Headland, okay. Brian, would you like to respond to any of this, or? No, sir, I think that we uh, have uh, talked about all the different items that people have brought up. You know, we either have a uh, plan in place for it, or have considered it in any future design, or will consider any future design development if the project moves forward. Uh, okay. Uh, I just want to tell the people that are here speaking for and against that there may be action taken at the board today deciding this if you wish to stay around for the four o'clock meeting. Uh, so. I'm sorry, I'll just step in. So, um, I'm sorry if everybody can hear me. Uh, the meeting today that started at two was scheduled as a workshop. The board's not allowed to take official action in the workshop, only take public comments. Um, and hear presentations from staff. However, the board may decide um, whenever we open our four, a regular four o'clock meeting, they may decide to add an item to the agenda to take formal action at four o'clock. So I encourage you guys to stay here until four if you can. Um, I, I, again, that's gonna be up to the board whether or not they take official action today, but it, that won't happen until our four o'clock meeting. We're going to take just a five-minute break, uh, so we'll be right back.
telling right now that we did all the dudes perfectly. Thank you, Chairman. The next uh, part of this workshop is the uh, Headland Street uh, neighborhood beach access. So in previous uh, workshops and meetings, we've discussed uh, building what we call a neighborhood beach access. Uh, do you have a survey of that, uh, Jason? So on this project, we've done uh, no conceptual designs yet. We do have a survey of the property. Um, Jason's going to pull up here. But anyway, so what we would uh, recommend is that it be just a typical neighborhood beach access that includes a on-grade boardwalk from the road or the paved surface to the top of the dune, and then from the top of the dune, our regular dune walk over down to the beach uh, would have a uh, small stormwater uh, system installed to correct some issues that exist there right now. Public Works has built a small uh, retention area that seems to be catching most of the water that comes down headland and allows it to drain off efficiently. But we would put an exfiltration system underneath the boardwalk. Uh, where it comes down onto the beach, uh, the adjacent property has a uh, existing boardwalk. We would run ours parallel to theirs and perpendicular to the water. Uh, the uh, neighborhood is Sea Highlands, the uh, right of ways and the road areas and uh, the beach area were dedicated to the public and so it has a um, when I referred earlier to property dedicated to Walton County that's what I was referring to Brian the, the, on the east property line mm -hmm. that boardwalk coming from that property does it encroach upon the easement that we have there okay so those uh, road right-of-ways uh, come down to the top of the bluff Okay. And then below that, the beach area was dedicated to the public, as okay. well as the roadways. And so the, there's a demarcation line there at the top of the bluff. Uh, it does, so their boardwalk comes off of their property onto the area that was dedicated as beach area. And so it does not come onto the road right away because it stops at the same uh, southern boundary as the property line adjacent to it. Okay. We can put ours uh, adjacent to it. Yes, sir. And so uh, that, in that area, most of the boardwalks are perpendicular to the water's edge. And so ours will be perpendicular to the water's edge and parallel to the, to the one that's there. How much beach or how much beachfront do we have access or po how much public beaches are there? In Sea Highlands, there's approximately 1,400 foot of dedicated public beach. And in Seagrove 3rd Edition, which is just to the west, there's another 1,400 foot of uh, beach that's dedicated to the public by plat. My math, isn't the, but that's by a little over a mile. 2,800 uh, linear feet, it's about half a mile. Half a mile, okay. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Where's the nearest yeah. beach? Neighborhood beach access. That'd be just to the west, I mean, to, to the east, uh, Greenwood uh, or Andalusia. Sometimes I get those two mixed up. And then Dothan Street, there's four of them, or there's three of them that have been improved in that area. Dothan on the far east. Andalusia Greenwood or Greenwood Andalusia and then Headland that doesn't exist now and then going to the west would be Gardenia which is um, approximately a block uh, block and a half away we then we have, have public beach accesses at each road right. uh, that meets 30A as you go to the west none of these have any parking associated with them other than bicycle no, sir, neighborhood beach accesses are meant to be walked to or ride your bicycle to, so very few of our neighborhood beach accesses have uh, some parking available. These do not. There's, there's not opportunity for that, and we wouldn't recommend that. And, Mr. Chair, how wide would this, would this access be? I mean, would this walkover be? So our standard uh, width is six feet. It's a nominal width. Uh, that's the outside of the handrails. Uh, we we're trying to build all of our new beach accesses to a standard design so that you know you're on a public beach access and uh, get continuity, give it that South Walton look. What is at that location now? Pardon me? What's on that location? There's now? nothing there now. Uh, the people that uh, 
develop the property to the west of it. If you remember, that was the old Seagrove Villas uh, Motel. Uh, when they tore that down, they built, I believe there's four residences and the residents adjacent to Headland, uh, they actually put some landscaping out there. Uh, some of that landscape has been removed. Uh, and uh, like I say, Public Works built a small retention area there to catch uh, some runoff issues. Uh, and then it's just a bluff down to the beach. Brian, would you know if the area is north of 30A, basically northwest of this particular site, uh, the number of homes, new homes that are going in in that particular area? No, sir. That's a secret of third edition. Uh, a lot of that is being uh, redeveloped, so to speak. Uh, the older cottages being torn down and, and new homes being built on those lots. Uh, and then there are some new neighborhoods a little bit further north of that going in. I, I do not know the exact number of houses that are in there. Thank you. And these walkovers are used consistently, even though there is, like Commissioner Glidewell said, even though there's mm -hmm. no parking right there on 30A, we still have a lot of people walking over for Yes, ma'am. I, I believe the original developers of our area had it right. Uh, they uh, uh, platted the Gulf Front properties to the top of the bluff or the uh, toe of the bluff, the dune, and they created uh, public space for the interior lots, and they, they gave uh, or they dedicated beach accesses on every road, uh, almost universally going down through that part of Seagrave. Uh, and so, uh, yes, it, if you go down the road during the uh, summer, you'll see bikes, uh, wagons, you'll see people traversing the multi-use path carrying their beach equipment. And so uh, they are heavily used, and uh, I think it was a, a good way to do it. Like I say, our original developers, you know, really, uh, they knew what they were doing. It's a shame everybody did it. Anything else? Okay, we'll hear from the public now. Thank you, sir. Uh, Linda Cook. Good afternoon. I'm speaking on behalf of a neighbor who couldn't be here. She's in San Francisco. Spell your name and give your name. Oh, and spell Linda, it to the Linda Cook. CO OK. Thank you. I live at Wood Beach Drive. And I can answer a question that you just asked, Brian. As far as Sugarwood, our development has 63 lots in it. And right next to ours is Grove by the Sea. I don't know how many they have, but they have more than we do. And they all use those accesses in addition to all the large homes. But I'm uh, reading this for Kay Brief. She lives at 247 Wood Beach Drive. Dear Walton County Commissioners, I, I, I had wanted to be there today to speak on behalf of this issue that affects both residents and visitors, but I had to be out of town, so I asked my good neighbor to read this letter. My husband and I are county residents who live in Sugarwood Beach across from 30A at the expansive dedicated, from the expansive dedicated to the public beach and Sea Highland. By now, you've probably heard for many reasons why we need a headland beach walkover and access to every inch of beach we can get. Already, we've witnessed the impact of the pressures of private beach, beach privatization as well as a booming tourist construction. The public right-of-way at Headland Avenue in Montgomery is perfect for a neighborhood beach access, and the county, meaning we the people, already own this property. No additional dollars are needed to purchase the land. All that is needed is a walkover, a shower, and a bike rack. Yet some Sea Highland neighbors have strongly objected since this walkover was first proposed in 2016. In fact, adjacent residents have encroached with landscaping and a private walkover. They've cited public safety as a major reason to block the Headland walkover. Inquiring minds want to know the facts. I called Walton County Sheriff's Office and South Walton Fire Rescue. I asked for official records for these streets. 30 a.m. Montgomery between Headland and Dothan, the streets that bookend the Sea Highland development. Headland, Greenwood, Andalusia, and Dothan that run through Sea Highland. Here's what they reported. In the last four years, the Sheriff's Office departed, de reported eight collisions on 30A between Headland and Dothan. Five were between Gwyn Greenwood and three at Andalusia. None were reported on Headland or Montgomery. In the last five years, fire rescue reports two vehicle related incidences on 30A. None were reported on Montgomery or Headline. Fire and Rescue and Sheriff's Office 
uh, records may overlap, but I don't know for sure. I've also tried to contact the Florida Highway Patrol, but did not receive a response. Not in my neighborhood is often the response of people lucky enough to own beachfront properties. It's time that we truly acted like neighbors and considered and acted for the betterment of all. Thank you, commissioners, for listening to, for listening to us all and helping improve both our beach experience and our daily lives. Sincerely, Kay Brief. I have four seconds left, so I'll say I'm for Headland also. I spoke at the last meeting. So thank you very much. David Cook. Some people call me Mr. Linda Cook, but uh, it's actually David Cook, C-O-O-K, also Wood Beach Drive. Uh, we've talked about this Headland thing before, and uh, there always seems to be strong feelings by people advocating for and against placing the beach walk over at Headland Avenue. And unfortunately, these strong feelings are reflective of how our society works lately, uh, setting neighbor against neighbor. That's too bad. Uh, in this case, if I were uh, the property owner, the Tomlinson's to the west, uh, and I'd paid $9 million for a 6,000 square foot house, I probably wouldn't want people walking by my house either. Uh, the folks on the other side, the Isaacson's, uh, represented probably by Mr. White, uh, Nancy White today, have owned that property going back to when it was developed. I wouldn't want to give up my private thing and uh, give it up either. That being said, uh, it's clear that family beach cottage development of the 50s that went on in Old Sea Grove and Sea Highlands is given away to an invasive species of oversized extravagant homes. These homes are not owned by individuals or families for personal use the way they were to begin with. Generally, these new, I call them home hotels, are owned by LLCs and trust arrangements. And, have, and those folks have no interest or concern for our neighborhoods they're designed as cash generating businesses and or speculative real estate transactions. These home hotels are rented to two large groups. This uh, larger things, as we've already talked about, has adverse effects to noise, crime, increased fire calls, and access to the beast, all underlying uh, both for and against customary use. This, this is kind of the, the, uh, the start of it. Um, it is interesting to note that the two owners on either side do not have those as their primary residences. In a broader view, the most recent Walton Sun reported in 2018 TVC economic results a $230 million increase in tourism. The, in 2018, TVC spent an eye-popping 43% of its $23 million budget on marketing. This overheated marketing of tourism has taxed Walton County infrastructure beach facilities and the goodwill of full-time residents, workers, taxpayers, and voters. Having been self-employed in the past, I learned to manage three P's of my business. Those P's are the product, the promotion, and the process. And I think in this case, Walton County and TDC has a, a crucial thing to shift it from promotion to the product. The, uh, well, the, the Headland Avenue, Walkover is an ideal, easily done uh, enhancement to product. Um, I thank you folks for your time. I've down to my five seconds. Okay, uh, John Harlow. My name's John Harlow. I live at 98, H-A-R-L-O-W, and I live at 98 Wood Beach Drive, and I'm the president of the Sugarwood Beach Homeowners Association. So I, want, I just want to talk about a couple of questions that came up. One of them was about construction in the area. So if you, I brought a map that we've assembled of basically the changes that have occurred in the past five to seven years in terms of new construction and the vacant lots that remain to be built. So the blue dots up there are all the new homes that have been built right in that area in the past few years and the, the uh, red ones are lots that are still available to build. We've had a huge amount of construction in the area and along the way we also 
lost the semi-public access we had from the Seagrove Motel uh, beach access. So we went from you know, uh, one more access than we have now to one less while we grew tremendously. Some of these houses are really large. Nobody's building really small houses in the neighborhood now. So the Greenwood access in the summer is pretty busy. It looks like that. It's wall-to-wall uh, -wall people there. And if you go on to the next one, at the same time, it's so far down the beach to the next access that a good portion of what's directly in front of the headland access tends to be way underutilized. So we would love to see a little more balance there and the ability for people to access that part of the beach easily and to also maybe relieve a little bit of the load that's coming at Greenwood. We have 63 lots in our neighborhood, all but about a dozen are developed, but a dozen more still exist to be developed. And, and we only have the one way in and out of the neighborhood. Greenwood is our most natural access to the beach and a lot of the homes that were able to use the Seagrove Motel access have to come to Greenwood. They can go to Gardenia, but Gardenia is so tight. There's no, you know, such limited ability to park a bike there. It's, it's a hard part of 38 to get across that Greenwood tends to carry a lot of that traffic. So, you know, we are, we are very much in favor from the point of view of our HOA of getting uh, an access at Headland. Thank you. Mansell White. Mansell White, W-H-I-T-E, uh, Montgomery Street, Seagrove Beach. So commissioners, how many times has this been brought up? I, I, I can remember three, and the three times that the commission has all voted against pursuing this thing. Um, it keeps coming up like a bad penny. Well, why is that? I'm just curious. It's, uh, it seems like there's a few active individuals who have been pushing for this and pushing very hard and getting friends and people and political parties and so forth uh, all involved in this thing where there's just, there's just not a need for it. Uh, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of the rhetoric that goes on on social media and in, in front of the, uh, the, the commission here uh, has to do with a lot of uh, aspersions being cast on beachfront owners, the mean, greedy beachfront owners that are trying to keep people off their beach. A lot of deceptive words like restore the access or reopen it. It's never been open in 70 years. There's never been an access there. There's never been a need for the access in 70 years. Um, a lot of the support comes from the Sugarwood people. But no, those people have to walk, if, if they had an access at, Sugar, at uh, Headland, they'd have to walk further than they do now to get to an access. Or else they'd have to trespass on private property. They have to go out of the front of their access, to their, their entrance to the sub, subdivision, just like the previous speaker mentioned. So they, they don't really have a, a benefit to this. Um, a lot of the communications, like I say, it, it has a lot of aspersions against the beachfront owners, which, which I think is, is uh, very unfair because, as, as I mentioned in the last time I spoke before the commission, uh, the Sea Highland subdivision has a beach that's dedicated to the public. There's the 1,400 feet of beach, and there's nobody that's ever been discouraged from using that beach. And I live on that beach, and I watch the thousands of people use it unimpeded every day. That's just a, a, a lot of baloney when people talk about tr people trying to... We already have customary use on that beach, and that's unchallenged. And there's nobody that's ever trying to make, make anything but that. And that's written in stone for the future. The fact remains, it's a three-block street. There's three accesses on it right now plus the other ones that were talked about. It's the most access dense area in all of 30A. We got miles of 30A with no access at all. And here we are, Montgomery Street, a quiet little neighborhood uh, that I've been living in all my life. People want to make it into a, a regional access with all this extra access. The safety issue is also the other thing that a lot of people have talked about. The fire department has twice now had beach fires, at, uh, dune fires. That they had to cut it, come in and had to back out. They tried to go in headland and had to back out because they can't make the turn. It's a blind corner. It's safe. There's not enough room for a sidewalk along there. So people are going to have to go in there on foot or on bicycles, and you cannot see anything coming around that corner. So I'm opposed to this, and I think it's, it's amazing and crazy that y'all are having to reconsider this a fourth time. Brian Montague. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Uh, my name is my name is Brian Montague. I, my wife and I live at 43 Chanel Court um, in the Sugarwood Beach subdivision. We're among those uh, that uh, live in that subdivision that, as you know, is right across the street from Sea Highlands and, and excuse me, in this area. Uh, first, uh, thank you uh, to the members of this board and to the TDC for your and its work on challenges of beach access and customary use. Um, we local taxpayers, we local residents, appreciate your stewardship. We also appreciate, but don't envy, the challenges you face balancing competing equities in matters like this and making decisions about making best use of always limited county financial and administrative resources. Those factors considered in the context of whether to create beach access at Headlands Avenue, I personally come down on the side and am here to request your support for allowing such access, but only in a way that minimizes intrusions on neighboring private property. The county should commit to ways of doing that, in my opinion. And that is a, a more narrow request than even some of the other proponents of Headlands Access uh, favor. But I think there is a middle ground that uh, honors uh, uh, and makes commitments of preserving neighboring property interests, but also allows this access. And that's, that's what I'm requesting. Um, but the county should create access. Doing so would be a natural complement to the county's customary use efforts and would help address increasing beach usage by a continually expanding Seagrove beach going population that Mr. John Harlow has spoken about in greater detail. But again, minimizing effects on adjoining landowners should be a feature, in my opinion, of any new access point. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else on Heather? <coughs> Uh, yes, uh, I had a letter that was mailed to me by my, oh, I'm sorry, Alice Butella, um, 55 Chanel Court, Santa Rosa Beach. I have a uh, letter that was um, asked, I, uh, my neighbor asked me to read. Is that possible to do that? Sure. Okay, thank you. And this is from the Julie Allen in the Sutherland family, and uh, here they wrote this on May 13, 2019. Dear Commissioners, the Sutherland family regretfully could not attend the meeting today, so we have written a letter to be read. My family are original owners in Sea Highland since 1976. We were neighbors to the Flowers family on North Headland. We used the Seagram Villas Beach access the entire time it was established from the late 70s to around 2015. We need the Headland Beach access to replace the access we lost due to the villa's access being taken away from us. I have heard several people argue that Headland is a breezeway. Uh, this is not true. I would like the commissioners to review the sea, Highland, sea Highland Platte from 1948 that clearly shows that Headland is a county road that runs to the dunes of the beach. Due to pr the private home construction, the county road and the right-of-way are being encroached while the commissioners are still deciding on what to do. Please be an activist for the public people and grant a beach access at South Headland. Thank you for your time. The Sutherland family, 100 Birmingham Street, Sea Highland Community, Seagrove Beach, Florida. And uh, I will, she has the uh, plaque to the clerk. Now, if I may, can I continue to Got speak a minute on my and 25 behalf? Seconds. Pardon? A minute and 25 seconds. Oh, that's all I have left. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Um, yes, I am a, I thank you for this, and I'm a Headland supporter. I, I have been before, and I continue to see the need with our expanding um, population in the area. Uh, someone mentioned that uh, Sugarwood uses uh, Greenwood. Yes, most people do. But with the thousands of hundreds of people that uh, Mr. Harlow 
indicated would be moving into the area, they need another access also. And um, rather than crowding onto Greenwood, I think that was misinterpreted, so I wanted to make uh, sense of that. Also, the idea that uh, this access uh, has been encroached upon, I think uh, we need to take that access back and use it since we are buying more beach accesses for the county, and I support you on that. And I think uh, this would be very good use of tax dollars money so that uh, adjacent property owners do not absorb 20 feet of beach, public beach, 20 feet have been lost. And it's our time to enhance that and make it very usable for our neighborhood. And I thank, uh, <coughs> thank you, and I think the neighbors would be very grateful if you made that proper decision of uh, developing this into what should be. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Vitella. thank uh, all of you for your commitment to develop more beach accesses as you know our development area is far outpaced availability of public accesses uh, and the area near headland is act has less accesses than it did eight years ago please look at exhibit one of seagrove villas in 2010 with a walkover in the headland the beach walkover at seagrove villas was previously used by the public for beach access as per the testimony of uh, Julie Allen previously. Uh, please look at exhibit two of Greenwood and Helen area with new construction marked in red. You'll see a, a lot of new construction uh, in, in around Headland and in Sugarwood. Sugarwood alone has added 30% more houses in the last 10 years. There's also a planned three house development at the corner of Grove and Gardenia. Uh, nope, exhibit three of occupancy estimates near uh, near Headland, the houses near Headland have a capacity of over 100 occupants, which includes a mega house holding over 25 and a new 7,000 square foot house under construction. The occupants in those houses alone would pretty much crowd uh, Greenwood. Um, now, note uh, uh, picture four of Greenwood overcrowding, which I think uh, you just saw previously. Uh, without the headland walkover, beachovers will not walk the additional 300 feet beyond headland to use the closest Gardenia Street walkover, which is quite narrow and would not, cannot uh, offer the amenities that uh, headland can. Um, they, will, they will use the already overcrowded Greenwood access. Please look at exhibit five and then six. Uh, of the hundreds of feet of underutilized public beach in front of an unopened headland access between Greenwood and Gardenia. And then note in, in number six, the overcrowded Greenwood in the distance. We are not effectively utilizing our public beaches. The 20 foot wide headland can offer more conveniences um, and the fact that headland access opens out into a neighborhood street rather than 30A is actually a safety benefit. Headland has been used safely for decades by pedestrians and bicyclists, and you've already heard that there's really no police reports of any problems there. Uh, and if there are legitimate safety problems, they should be corrected, uh, whether there's a beach access or not. And if there's access problems for fire trucks, that should be fixed whether there's access there or not. That's uh, irrelevant. Uh, Headland is a walk to bicycle neighborhood destination, so parking should not be an issue. In conclusion, in addition, the addition of a walkover at Headland would make more efficient use of hundreds of feet of public beach. With the public's customary use of private beaches in jeopardy, can the county really afford not to maximize access to and use existing public beaches? Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else on Headland? Seeing none. Uh, Sydney, you want to make an announcement? Yes, we will. So as I stated earlier, the board um, can't take official action in this portion of the meeting. Um, but if everyone wants to stay until our 4 o'clock meeting, at that time the board can decide whether or not they want to add um, an agenda item to take formal action at that time. Um, I know we have one other. On, we item. have one other on uh, Walton Dunes, Deborah Thomas. Is that it? 
Yes, ma'am. And if Ms. Thomas would come forward, and so if anybody else who didn't have a chance to speak, either on Walton Dunes or Headland, now is your opportunity to do so. Thank you so much, Deborah Thomas, T H O M A S, a 22 year resident of Beachfront Trail. I have watched it grow so much. I have seen so many accidents, and as scared as I am to talk in front of people, I had to be here. I had to tell you, I just watched an elderly gentleman last week turn over in his motorized three-wheeler right in front of my house. There's a hill on Beachfront Trail. We've already spoken about two curves. One time I was driving north on that curve. I was going so slow because I've seen children grow up in that area skateboarding. They do it in the street. I was probably going five miles an hour. Three little, three little boys right at the blind spot came right in towards my car. Of course, I was able to stop, but it scared me to death. I've seen children turn over on their bikes because there were so many people on the sidewalk they would get out on the road. There's a hill there that has to be looked at. Um, I've watched people walk in the road. I've watched people bicycle in the road and skateboard. It's because there's no room for everybody and all the traffic. I'm concerned about children. I've seen children run after their pets. I've seen parents run after children. I can't tell you how scared I am about this. I don't know what would happen if more injury or possible loss of life, and that's important for our families and our visitors. This is extremely important. Please take it into consideration. Thank you. Okay. Fred. Thank you. I know we're running out of time, so I'll be quick. Uh, Fred Trucker, T-R-I-C-K-E-R. -E uh, I just wanted to say I think this has been a very thoughtful, respectful discussion. I think it's been very productive. And uh, I do agree with a lot of the comments that were made, particularly about what Lori Reichenbach said about things have changed since this had been considered previously. Uh, but I, the one comment that I, that I think I keyed in on was the speaker that said that she wanted to be able to participate in whatever it is the county decides to do. She wants participation, and I think whatever you do, I would encourage you to uh, put in place a process whereby the neighbors can sit down and work with your design team to come up with something that satisfies their safety concerns, access concerns, all their concerns, I think would be very helpful. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing none, we'll adjourn till 4 o'clock for the regular BCC meeting. Thank you. <laughs>